Right, in the last video, we nailed the perfect honeycomb centered croissant, which is great and all, but I think we all know what we really want to make. <laughs> Yes, pan of or chocolatines, depending on where you come from, are the only reason I think it was so important for us to get that croissant dough just right in the last video. I mean, I would choose pan of over a croissant any day of the week, but to be honest, if you put chocolate in anything, it basically makes it to the top of my leaderboard. So for these pan of chocolate, we're gonna need one quantity of our croissant dough. This is a two day process. So if you want pan of chocolate, you're gonna need to plan ahead. I won't take you through the whole process for my croissant dough recipe here, but if you are interested, I'll leave a link to the full video in the description down below. It's well worth checking out if you've ever wanted to make a croissant with that incredible honeycomb crumb. Once you've made your croissant dough, it'll need to rest for eight to 12 hours or overnight before we can actually turn it into pan of chocolate. After it's rested, we can remove it from the fridge it'll probably be a little bit puffed up and that's great. It's a good sign that the yeast is doing its thing. I would recommend that the dough is around 10 to 14 degrees when you work with it. Any cooler and the butter is likely to crack as you roll it out, which is gonna mess up your layers. And much warmer, the butter will soon become too soft to work with effectively. Then roll the dough out to a 25 by 25 centimeter square. Turn in the dough regularly as we roll it to make sure it's not sticking to the board, adding extra flour if necessary. Also, as you're rolling it, measure the dough regularly as we want it to be just the right size so that the dough ends up being about a centimeter thick. Much thinner, and these pan of chocolates aren't gonna puff up to their full potential. Once the dough is the right size, use a ruler to lightly mark and trim the dough to a neat 24 by 24 centimeter square. Continue to use the ruler to help mark out six rectangles that each measure eight by 12 centimeters. Then using a sharp knife, cut along those guidelines as cleanly as possible to create six neat rectangles. Now we're ready to assemble these pan of chocolate. I wanted to go the extra mile for a pan of chocolate, so I've splashed out on these Calibre chocolate sticks, especially created for making pan of chocolate. And splash out is probably the wrong thing to say because per 100 grams, these are actually cheaper than most decent chocolate you can buy in the shop. I think this was like 13 quid for 1.6 kilos. And I know I find a ton of other uses for this outside the realm of pan of chocolate. And these sticks are a perfect snacking size, which is just a bonus. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link to them in the description down below. And if you're not, you can just use some chocolate buttons or cut up a chocolate bar into thin strips. To shape these pan of chocolate, place one or two of these chocolate sticks at the short end of the rectangle. Roll the dough over the chocolate to completely cover it. Then place another one or two chocolate sticks onto the dough and continue to roll it up into a log shape. Let's have a look at this one more time from another angle. Place one or two of the chocolate sticks at the short end of the rectangle, roll the dough over the chocolate to completely cover it, and then place another one or two sticks onto the dough and continue to roll it up into a log shape. Continue this process until you've rolled up all of the rectangles. Then place them seam side down onto a baking sheet lined with silicone paper. This is just gonna prevent them from unfurling as they prove and cook. Leave a bit of room between each one so that they can expand. Then spray or brush each pastry with a little bit of water to stop them from drying out and then cover them and leave them to proof. Just like the croissants, this is a long process, so be patient. These ones took about three hours at 24, 25 degrees. Obviously, it may take more or less time depending on the temperature where you are. Once the pan of chocolate have proved, they should have doubled in size like these ones here. Then carefully brush each pan of chocolate with a little bit of beaten egg. Be careful not to knock out any of the air from the pastries. Use your lightest touch. After they're all glazed, place the pan of chocolate into the oven and bake at 200 degrees for 10 minutes. Then turn down the heat to 170 degrees and continue to cook for another 15 minutes until rich golden brown and crisp. Once cooked, place the pan of chocolate onto a wire rack and leave to cool. And it's time to celebrate because you've just managed to harness the power of rich flaky pastry and silky dark chocolate to make something truly incredible. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this recipe, let me know by hitting the thumbs up down below. And if you're new here and you like what you see, why not consider subscribing as well? 
If you like any of the equipment that you see in this video, why not check out my Amazon store? You'll also find those little chocolate sticks there as well. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. I love to see what you guys are making. As always, the ingredients for this recipe are in the description down below. And if you want the full recipe and the method, you can always head over to my website, albedo.co.uk. And there's a whole bunch of other recipes over there that you can check out as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you.